Everything else is here, though. Everything else screams. I'm a big boy AMG. Take me seriously. Hey, crew, I've got the key to that 2018 Nissan Altima, I mean 2023 Mercedes AMG C43. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. The 43 is the entry level AMG for this all new generation C class. And this one has a lot of options on it, including both the AMG Night 1 and 2 packages, which do things like black out this Panamericana grille, but not the AMG TriStar in the center or the one above it. We've got an AMG badge off to the right, more black accenting for the lower fascia. There's a functional front air dim, non-functional corner vents, but you do get functional pass-throughs to cool the front brakes and tires. Here projector LED headlights, that's a dead bug. They're LED DRLs and turn signals. And I'm not usually a fan of gray cars, but this one, this graphite gray metallic, has such luscious and standout metallic flake that I'm drawn to it. At the side, this vehicle has the upgraded 20-inch AMG multi-spoke wheels wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, 245 section front and 265 at the rear. Within those wheels are upgraded AMG brakes clamping on drilled rotors. Here's a turbo electrified badge denoting the mild hybrid four-cylinder under the hood. Carbon fiber for the mirror caps with the carbon fiber exterior pack. Black window trim with the AMG night packages. Stepping back to look at the profile, it is a soft silhouette. The new C-Class is longer than before, and that soft design contrasts the very edgy and almost aerodynamic looking wheels. I quite like those. Here at the back, with that carbon fiber pack, we get this cool lip spoiler, dark chrome for the AMG badge and the C43 badge. There are LED tail lights with LED turn signals above a black diffuser with four blacked out exhaust outlets. Especially with these options, the C43 does look like a proper AMG now. And the new C-Class in general looks more like its bigger, more expensive siblings. And that's a very good thing. My question for you, does the face look like an angry catfish? No, seriously, do you like this new, more rounded design direction AMG is taking, or do you prefer the edgier predecessors? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this black leather interior with optional red accents and red seat belts. There's suede strips on this perforated seat back. On the doors, there's leather up top with red contrast stitching. Leather continues all the way down to the armrest with padding. This is plastic trim. You get one touch up down windows. Here we've got an upgraded Burmester 3D surround sound system. Gloss black here around your door lock and unlock hard plastics down low and around the side. Stepping in, behind my own seat at six feet tall. I've got good knee room. The seat back's all injection molded. There's a big map pocket, good sized foot pockets to slide my feet under. Thigh support is not really there though. Headroom is okay. My head is just grazing against the roof with my head back on that headrest. That gets the thumbs up from me. In the middle, we've got air vents, an optional four zone climate control system, and below we've got two USB-C ports above the drive shaft hump that isn't too large, and there is a cutout to slide your foot across. And here I can fit in the middle. It would be a tight squeeze, but you could fit three full-size adults for a short runabout. And if you don't have a middle passenger, there's an armrest that comes down with leather padding and two cup holders. Let's check out the front. Door closed noise is solid. Smart keyless entry is for the rear and front doors. These front seats are heated with multi-way power adjustments, including lumbar, and that's set on this piece of flagrant hard, cheap plastic. There are illuminated AMG tread plates. You get AMG floor mats and aluminum foot pedals. On the doors, we find the remainder of your seat controls with a nice and rolled finish, three positions of memory, then leather in all the same places as the back, and hard plastics in all the same places. Four one-touch windows, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors. Your trunk release button is here. And inside, we find 12 cubic feet of space. Underneath the floor is not a spare tire, but you do get more room. And if you need more space, the releases for your 40, 20, 40 split folding seats 
are here in the back. There's a power close and lock function on the trunk lid, which seals up real quick into the driver's seat we go. I'll throw it in accessory mode to fire on both of our screens. We've got a digital instrument cluster here that is customizable and immersive. A suede and leather wrapped steering wheel is an option. It's got a flat bottom to it, super thick in the hands. Here we've got reconfigurable drive settings and then drive modes. Lots of touch sensitive controls in the wheel, which work most of the time unless your hands get palmy, then they don't respond. Large aluminum paddles on the back of the wheel have nice travel. Then here we've got a just under 12 inch tablet style infotainment system. This comes straight out of the S class and it also is just visually rich. It's responsive and it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Around the screen is plenty of optional carbon fiber trim. There's stitched leather up on the dashboard, head up display, and then these very neat air vents. Beneath the screen, we've got lots of gloss black. This is gonna smudge, scratch, and collect dust. Not my favorite trim. Slide that forward to find two cup holders. You've got two USB-C ports and a wireless charging pad as an option. Further back under the leather top console is a little more storage plus two USB-C ports. Up top, we find a slider for your power sunroof. And then visibility is excellent. Plus you've got standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. This cabin is loaded with features. It's stylistically compelling. The technology is cutting edge. I just wish that for 76 grand as tested, they would do a better job of hiding the blatant cheap hard plastics. Now it's time to take the C43 for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. Frumpy. That indeed, the sound of a turbo four cylinder. Welcome cabin crew. Thank you for joining me for this drive to survive. Love that show. In the C43 AMG, our drive mode can either be selected here by hitting the AMG icon and then swiping between, ooh, got nice and deep. Swiping through your drive selections, you've got five to choose from, or you can turn this dial, which I much prefer. It's much more interactive. A touch screen is such old hat, which itself is an old expression. That's ironic. We're gonna start in comfort mode as we do, and then go up with the stock into reverse. That brings up an ultra crystal clear resolution camera system. You got your bird's eye view here, got your backup camera. You can swoop around to some different views if you so choose. I mean, this thing's crazy. It's like you can monitor traffic or just spy on people. You could do that from the camera system. That's weird, don't do that. And into reverse we go. Ooh, look at those trajectory lines. Even those are amazing. And then it's down into drive with the stock. And we will kick things off with a turning radius test. Keeping the camera system going, cranking that wheel. That is a mighty fine turning circle. Thanks to the standard rear wheel steering system. Turn signal sound. Sort of a high pitched tap. Don't know if I'd want to keep that going for very long at a light. Now the world famous horn test. Mm. Nothing remarkable about that, just a solid horn. Moving on to the powertrain now, which is remarkable for its departure from what we knew before in the C43, which was a twin turbo V6 that made 385 horsepower. Now we have a single turbo two liter four cylinder with the mild hybrid setup that combines makes 402 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. And if you think that's crazy, going from a twin-turbo V6 to a single-turbo 2-liter 4, think about the C63, which went from a 4-liter twin-turbo V8 to a 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder. That's just wild, and yet power is up on that one to 671, just ludicrous. That's a full-on plug-in hybrid setup. This is just a mild hybrid, though. And 402 horses are routed through a 9-speed multi-clutch automatic gearbox 
and sent to all four tires. What's really cool about this setup is that the electric supercharger can almost instantly spool up that turbo compressor and cut that turbo lag so that you barely notice it. Yeah, below 2000 RPM, there is some of that traditional delay as the boost is building, but as soon as you get to the higher part of the 1800, 1900 RPM, it is just on and you've got plenty of momentum. The nine speed works great when you're in motion. It just has that kind of typical dual clutch or now multi-clutch with a wet clutch pack clunkiness at low, low speeds. So you're just coming up to a stop as we will here and you feel those final few gear changes. And furthermore, with the start stop system, we'll experience it just now, the engine cuts off in the last couple miles per hour and there it just started again. And so you have this lurch at the very end of your brake pedal travel, which is uncomfortable enough that I find myself turning off the start stop system almost every single time I hop behind the wheel. Thankfully, there is a button for it. You're not having to hunt around, but yeah, that one just goes off pretty quickly, which I know is cutting some of the potential efficiency of this powertrain, but it's worth it for the comfort factor, not having to deal with the engine cutting out. And there we felt the multi-clutch kind of give us a kick getting from first to second gear. Beyond the intermittently abrupt gear changes, the ride quality in the C43 with these adaptive dampers is kind of sharp. It's firmer than I'd like. It undulates a lot over the road surface. And then beyond that, the harsher impacts are truly felt. I'm just gonna go over some of these lane markings for a sec. Yeah, you not only hear those, which itself isn't great in a luxury product, but you definitely feel them. They kind of just jab you a bit through this very comfortable leather chair, which is highly adjustable. That's great. Got a good driving position for myself. You have quite a bit of adjustment on the electric power adjusting. I'm gonna say it again, steering rack. But I just feel like this ride quality is firmer than it should be for the 43 version of the AMG C-Class. The C63, that's a little more excusable. That's a bit more hardcore of a performance machine, but this one is really trying to blend the daily livability with the performance, and so the ride feels a bit out of place. And so around town, this isn't quite the comfort mobile that I was expecting. But as the speeds pick up, let's say you're sort of at a highway velocity, listening for the NVH level, two liter quiets down. There isn't much in the way of tire noise. Wind noise is hushed. This has the cabin insulation you expect of a Mercedes Benz. So as a luxury product, the C43 is a mixture of rough and refined, but as a performance product, let's see what we're working with. I'm gonna turn the dial, not to sport, but all the way to Sport Plus and just put my foot in it. Oh! Mercy me! Uh, the pace is there. The pace is definitely there. And the upshifts come with this wonderful flump. Oh, goodness, this thing's peppy. Yeah, hot dog. I'm missing a little of that twin turbo V6 exhaust note. Instead, we're hearing that turbo four sound like a hot hatchback, but it's, it's characterful. It's, it's fun in its own way but you can't dispute the performance. The straight line speed is 
some strong g-force just pushing me into the back of my chair I'm into it I'm very much into it now I'm itching to utilize these large aluminum paddles on the back of the wheel in manual mode and thankfully I've preset my drive selectors to switch between auto and manual mode with the tap of that toggle nice action quick shifts Oh, hear that overrun? I like it. Let's me go all the way out to red line. And absolutely haul. <laughs> okay. I see you. You're different. You're not the C43 we knew before. But you're very good. You are indeed. Listen to those pops. And feel this velocity. Wow. That, that feels like an AFG right there. I like the noise, didn't like it before. I certainly do now. Now speaking of real AMG, the new C43 gets the same race start system you get in the C63, and that is not something we had in the predecessor. The way you activate that is just being in the Sport Plus drive mode, holding your foot on the brake, pinning the throttle, and then letting it go. I've got my race box set up here to record that real world zero to 60. Here it goes. Letting it go. Yes, to 60 in 4.46 seconds. Now, 4.4 seconds is slower than I was expecting. Independent tests have seen as quick as 4.1. But what's important is that with this all-wheel drive system and with the race start launch control, that is going to be repeatable. So you're always going to get the low four-second range for your launch to 60. Now, I'm starting to put together this hypothesis that the C43, this new model, is more of a true AMG than its predecessor, but I need further evidence. I need some corners. I'm gonna start by prodding the brake pedal at speed. Excellent response, not just from the pedal, but the stopping power is there. C43 changes direction so readily, aided by that rear wheel steering system to tuck us in. body feels planted at speed. Slingshots out of corners. The all-wheel drive traction is supplemented by those PS4S tires, which have great grip. I like that the nine speed also holds on to gears for me. Doesn't seem to be in a hurry to upshift and will readily downshift to provide the greatest available grunt. <laughs> so entertaining, this car. If I have any critiques in regards to the dynamics, just that the steering, though so, so quick, is devoid of any true feel. It's light and accurate, but lacks the texture of the road surface that fills you with confidence as a driver. Everything else is here though. Everything else screams. I'm a big boy AMG, take me seriously. I am and I'm loving it. Make the same mistake I did, friends. Don't misjudge this turbo four-cylinder. Because it suits this C43 so well, they tuned it perfectly. The brakes correspond with strength. The 
body control is excellent. The transmission is intelligent. Man, if this is a foretaste of what that C63 with its turbo four-cylinder hybrid setup is gonna be like, then I'm excited. And I wasn't before. And that's gonna lead me to my miles per hour word of the day, which for the 23 Mercedes AMG C43 is embellished, meaning to increase attraction with features. And honestly, I originally meant this term with a little bit of a negative connotation because I was looking at all this tech and the glitzy carbon fiber and thinking, is this all here to distract us from the cheap hard plastics in places? And you know what, it might be a little bit true, but from a performance standpoint, this complex, highly boosted two liter four cylinder with a sophisticated 48 volt mild hybrid system and this complex all wheel drive system with a rear wheel steering, it's not all here to distract us from less than excellent driving dynamics. It's actually here to affirm it, to establish it. And I am thinking, man, I'm really glad for those embellishments because they are increasing the attraction of this latest generation C43 compared to its predecessor. Now, before we discuss pricing and competition, let's talk top speed and fuel economy. The top speed for the C43 is 155 miles per hour. The fuel economy is 19 MPG in the city, 26 on the highway, and 22 combined. The starting figure for the C43 is 61,000 bucks, but this one as tested with a whole lot of options is 76 grand. Competitors, I'm gonna take a little sampling. One from Germany, one from Japan, and one from the US. From Germany, in addition to the C43, we've got the BMW M340i X-Drive that starts at just under $56,000. It makes 382 horsepower from its turbo inline six cylinder, gets to 60 in 4.2 seconds, has a top speed limited to 155 miles per hour, and fuel economy of 26 combined somehow. I don't know how they do it. Then from Japan, we've got the Lexus IS500, which starts at $59,000. It makes 472 horsepower from its NAVH, gets to 60 in four and a half seconds, has a top speed of 165 miles per hour, and fuel economy of just 19 combined. And then from America, we've got the Cadillac CT4V Blackwing, which starts at the most expensive, just under $63,000. It makes 472 horsepower like the IS500, but with a twin turbo V6, it gets to 60 in 3.9 seconds if you choose the automatic, which I wouldn't do, I'd get the manual. And it has a top speed of 189 miles per hour with fuel economy like the IS500 of 19 combined. Now, before I reach a verdict, I'm gonna activate some of these nifty driving assistance features that we have equipped to this C43, including steering assistance, staying perfectly in the center of the lane, and a lane change assist feature, just indicate the lane you want to go to, and if it's clear, it'll move over, and then when you're there, it'll move back. Good stuff. Not really hands-free fully, just showing you this as a demonstration. All right, so... Of the vehicles that I talked about, the IS500 has indisputably the best soundtrack, and the CT4V Blackwing has the sharpest driving dynamics, even more so than the M340i, which I would say is the most well-rounded of these $60-ish thousand dollar sports sedans. It's fast, it's fun to drive, it looks good outside and in, it's the one that I think still kind of owns this segment right now. It's the one I would choose. But the C43 is way deeper into this discussion than I ever thought it was going to be. Coming into this review, I didn't give it the credit it deserves. It is so good to drive. In addition to having class-leaning technology and the most special feeling cabin, the things that hold it back a little bit, the ride is pretty firm, that nine speed is somewhat clunky at low speeds, and I don't find the exterior to be particularly attractive, just for me. Which would you guys choose? 
That's what I want to know. Let me know in the comments. Would you have the M340i? Would you have the Alexa size 500? Would you get the C43? Or would you get the Cadillac CT4V Blackwing? I hope you've enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I will see you again next time.